Hey and welcome back. This is Richie here and today I'm going to talk about these guys. And these are the new Edward releases or some RAF pods and um, various ordnance. I have three right here. There's another one which is out which I don't have and there's a couple more coming out next month or by the time this video is posted they'll probably be out anyway. Um, so the reason I release these guys are because of this. The, at the GR1 Desert Babe, the um, Gulf War variant of the British Royal Air Force ground attack um, aircraft fighter jet. Um, it does have some, it's basically the Revell kit with a few um, resin bits. It does have the Revell plastic weapons and pods in, in the box, like, well, a limited few. So um, I'm going to do a quick like unboxing and show you exactly what's in these boxes and show you what's inside the kit and you can kind of see the plastic versus the um, resin and also if it's included that's another thing so what I do have here is I have the Sky Shadow ECM pod which I believe I'm not an expert so if I get this wrong please put comments down below but my limited Wikipedia reading shows me that this is um, a radar jamming pod a little closer sorry no the B-O-Z-E-C or B-O-Z-E-C, Boz Ek Pod. This, I understand, is a um, pod that, for the techs um, when, like, basically inbound missiles and, and when they're getting attacked kind of thing, it will alert them um, and have some countermeasures and stuff involved. So that's that pod right there. And the third one I have is the alarm missiles. Now... If you're doing a GR1 or a Gulf War one, I know tons of people have bought these recently. These didn't carry the alarm missiles. This is a GR4 or an F3 variant. So if you have this boxing, or I'm dropping it. this one, as you can see in the box art too, it carries them. You can, this is good, but these alarm missiles do not fit the GR1 back in what, early 90s. Um, so if you're building this one, these aren't good. But like I said, if you're doing a later GR4 or an F3 variant, then you're good to go with these. So that's what's out right now. There is a chaff dispenser, which would work as well. And then there's two other ones. Um, what's well, three other releases coming out? There's um, Paveway 2 missiles, which I did some research and they were on some of the Gulf War jets. They're laser guided bombs. So the pave, and that comes with a tie out pod, TIA. T-I-A-L-D, tie out pod. Um, that's basically the guiding system for the payway missiles. So you could lo load your aircraft with a couple of payway missiles and the tie out pod. Um, and also to bring out the, oh, we're gonna hit, so I don't forget, the GP-233. Now that's a really cool weapon. That's basically um, a long kind of, kind of container slash pod that went kind of underneath the aircraft. I think they carried two of them. And that's what the Gulf, that's what the GR1 was really famous for in the Gulf War was destroying the airfield. So what it would do is it would come in light and low over the airfields with these pods and then basically the pods would open and it just basically tons of like little kind of cluster bombs and hundreds of little ordnance would come out of these pods and just blow up the tons of like basically destroy runways is what it's designed for. And that's really what the GR1 was really used mostly in um, the start of the Gulf War at least, was coming low and low and striking these airfields um, and knocking out sounds and that kind of stuff. So th those JP... I always forget, JP233, um, those pods look really cool and they'll be out next month as well. So um, if I was to build this version, I would probably go obviously with the pods and then the, probably JP233s for sure. And then maybe... Um, I'd have to check a pylon, see if there's room, but maybe a couple of paveways too. Um, I'm not sure if it carried, pa well, that's another thing. I'm not sure if it carried paveways and the, um, the cost of bombs. So that's probably something to do with some research as well. Um, a lot of these things, like these guys here, the two pods I just talked about um, earlier, the ones I have, these aren't just GR1, you can use for GR4 and F3. I believe they carried, so if you have those different boxings, you can use them for those too. So um, kind of waffling a little bit, hope that kind of, explains hope i've kind of made it a little clear how you know what you need and how and what each one does so um what i'm going to do now is i'm going to switch the camera down and we'll actually look inside these boxes and see if it's really worth upgrading the, the revel plastic for these resin ones so these guys come for about they, they can price retail price around about um about ten dollars ten pounds well nowadays exchange rates pretty much one to one so it's um about ten pounds ten dollars each for each pack so and it adds up i mean if you've got 
it's three or four of these things that's like price of another kit so um yeah so let me switch the camera back and down here and we'll, we'll go look at um look at the size see what you get for your money okay so again we're talking about the desert babe version of the latest limited edition the gr1 golf war variant so what actually do you get in the kit so look at the instructions here you can see that you do get um the two pods we just talked about and you get four sidewinders and that is it um so yeah so you do get those two pods and four sidewinders so you don't get any paveways and you don't get any of the jp233s either so um that's what you got in the kit that's kind of real quick look at the plastic so this is one of the pods i mean look at the plastic it's really good detail it's really fine rivet detail um the only challenge with these guys obviously two pieces so you can have a seam down which you know you have to just take care of make sure you take care of the seam which is i mean for pretty much standard modeling kind of stuff but you can have a seam two parts and then on this brew actually a couple of pieces broke off so that's the other pod right here the um the boz ecc or boz depending on you are in the world so it's right there Again, it's really nice and detailed, rivet detail. I hope fine you can see that. And there's your um, generic sidewinders. You get four of these. Um, so these are match pairs. So you get four of these um, sidewinders too. Um, so one thing I didn't mention actually is this other part. It does come in several parts. So um, you get the two sides, you have to put the fins on, and then also it's the bits that go on the side um, to the bulge kind of parts, whatever you call them. Um, so that's where we get the plastic. So let's go through what you get in the natural resin. So we'll start with the alarm missiles. Again, as I talked about, these aren't, um, these weren't on GR1, but if you're doing a GR4, a later version of Tornado or the F3, then you could put these alarm missiles on. So firstly, the box opens like this. I spent literally five minutes trying to open the ends, trying to get into it and I realized, oh, it sideways. So that's how you open the box. And get a nice little set of resin, a photo etch, tons of decals, and the actual instructions. So it looks like it comes with a rail as well. So I'm just kind of looking through this. So if you guys can see the instructions there, it's quite a lot of parts going into this one aircraft. I mean, sorry, into this one um, one piece of missile ordnance. So you've got four fins at the front, four fins at the back, um, well actually eight fins at the back, and a little P at the back, and then it says you know, painted barley gray, and then the rail, and then that will fit onto the pylon. pylon. And it also tells you about the correct positioning, and that is pretty much it. So you get four in a pack, and also like decals, there's tons of little decals on it too, so these gonna be really nicely detailed. You can see that, so that's closer up. Okay, so the decals a little faded, but hey ho, you see you get the old text and very small. Um, yeah, there's tons. So it's a bit, bear in mind, there's only four missiles. There's probably about twenty or thirty decals for each. A lot of fun, and then opening up the resin. Again, these are resin, so be careful when you, um, it's always okay touching, but when you stand, sand and cut, always make sure you um, take necessary protection. Resin dust is my, my safety disclaimer. Resin dust can be really dangerous. It gets on your lungs. Um, it's it's not good stuff at all. So if you are using resin, um, always make sure you wear a mask or a respirator when you're sanding and stuff. And then what I normally do is I do on a cutting mat. I normally have a paper wet paper towel down. And when I cut or sand on top of it, all the dust particles will stick to the paper towel and then as soon as i'm done I, i'll wipe it up and throw it straight away in the trash um just get rid of it it's not good the dust resin dust again is not good and you don't inhale that stuff it's kind of similar to kind of like asbestos and stuff back in you know back in the 80s 90s when people you know in workshops and stuff were dealing with that stuff and got it in their lungs it's, it's not nice stuff at all it's but that's what it is so um so this is basically what we got so i guess we've just basically got four of everything so let me just take one set so you can kind of see what one missiles is comprises of wait i'm actually the resin so i'm sorry the um photo etch too so on the back you got the photo etch i'm not gonna get that out but it's the tiny fins with photo etch 
and it's at the end back of the um, missiles too. So we can move these to the side. So this is what you basically could price with one. So you got the main kind of missile itself. Again, advantage of these things, it's one piece, there's no seam lines or anything. Four of the fins. You just need to cut off the resin block. I mean, when using resin, also use CA glue, super glue to, attend, to attach it. And some really nice kind of more fins. And then... This is, um, so you cut one of these off, this, this part of the, the rail, go on top, so this goes on, lots of instructions, but um, basically, you know, the missile goes on like that. So that is it, so that's what you get in the um, alarm missiles. Um, again, you don't get any plastic ones in this one, so I've got nothing to really compare it to, but they do look really nice, they are straight, they're not bowed or anything. I know one problem with Edward Braz and stuff can be can be a little bit kind of misshapen and stuff, but these look really well made, um, straight, and um, yeah, nice looking stuff. So put that one on the side. Then let's look at this sky shadow pod. Same deal as before. Inside the box, you get the decals. No photo etch in this one. <laughs> you know what it's, I it's you know I was saying the faded and the old packet, it's because it's got the paper on front of it. Now, duh, it's like a rookie mistake. So it's obviously the decal's got paper in front. That's why it don't look very bright and stuff. I mean you take if I take out the packet here and show you. Oh so, so silly, aren't I? But when you take there you go. It's so nice and sharp. It'd be the same with the other ones. I, I, I my mind's gone blank today, but there you go. So the decals, obviously not as many on the pod but you did with the with the um, alarm missiles. And the instructions look pretty sim simple, really. It's just four parts. And then there's a couple of different variants. You can do um, different colors. So just look at your reference materials and see you know, what time period you're doing and what color. And it gives you the color callouts too. So barley gray or dark green. So this is really nice, um, nice big chunky piece of resin here. That's, that's the front part. It's the back. And then those kind of parts right here, those indents, obviously where the fins go. So you cut these off and then they'll, they'll glue into here. Um, this looks really nice. Um, again, amazing detail. The rivet. Once you've got wash on this, you'll see all the rivets. I'm not sure if the camera's super close. I'm not sure if you can see any of this, but so that's if I compare it against the kit plastic. Definitely better detail, and also got no seam lines to contend with. So for me, this is a winner. Um, the resin one. So that's the sky shadow pod. And finally, the this guy. So again, this one, so the sky shadow pod is a radar jammer, and this one is the one that detects threats like missiles coming in um, and some countermeasures. Again, a couple of rock or gray or green, a couple of color choices. Instructions. And the parts in the back. So it looks like you have two big fins and then six smaller ones. Photo etch. Again, some nice decals. This is just one pod, so you can see it's going to look really detailed once you've got all that stuff on there. And the pod itself. Then the back goes, it's the back. And 
here. You got a couple of tiny little pieces. I'm not sure exactly what they are. Let's see in the instructions. Okay, so the little hooks on the top, attachment points. And these are super tiny. I mean, good luck with that. Not losing those. Um, yeah. So again, nice detail. Looking again. Um, really nice rivet detail. Again, solid and no seam lines. So if you went with this is compared to this guy. You see kind of difference. The plastic and the resin. The resin is definitely more... I mean, this these are acceptable, but the resin is definitely finer detailed, um, especially when you add all the photo etch and stuff, and it's going to look really nice. Um, I built the Revell 72nd kit Tornado, and it had really nice decals and detail. Um, I'm sure the um, this one does two to 48 scale one. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think you do get the decals and stuff as well, but... So you can see the difference too, and also you can have this, again. You can have the seam line take care of um, because it's two parts, opposed to one in the resin. So that is it. So let me switch the camera back to me, and we'll kind of finish up this video. So I hope you found this kind of somewhat helpful. If you kind of decide whether we get the browsing parts or not, um, so let me kind of switch the camera back, and we'll finish up. So there you go. Um, that's what. I, that's the quick look at unboxing video and looking inside these guys. Um, what do I think? Um, I'm biased. I'm a big Tornado fan. It's one of my favorite aircraft of all time. Also, I have a personal attachment to it. Um, I did serve in the Royal Air Force back many, so seemed like 20, at least 20 years ago now, I think it was. Um, so I served in the Royal Air Force and I was on Tornado Squadron. So I do have, that's just a personal favorite of the aircraft of mine. So as regards building it and super builds and stuff, I would spend the money and get the resin ones, the pods at least. Um, my, also for me, my, my modeling gets better every time and I improve my skills, but when it comes to like fuel tanks and like seam lines and stuff that's just st still a, a tricky thing for me you know i real hate kind of getting seam lines and get rid of those and also when you have such fine detail it's hard to get rid of seam lines and sand without losing that detail and having to rescribe and stuff so the one piece ones are a big bonus for me um if i was going to build again this the desert bay version which i will at some point um i'd definitely get the pods and i think i'd load it with those jp 233s too because just because of the um when i think tornado gulf war one bombing those runways and stuff is really what comes to mind and that's a really important of it so the kit itself um it does have i mean these are these aren't bad i mean the stuff that comes in the kit the two pods are pretty good um if i was just a casual builder or you know tornado wasn't like my, one of my favorite aircraft i'll probably just go with, with the ones in the pack but if you want to really kind of detail it up and go to town then definitely recommend these guys um again the alarm missiles um from what i believe were not on the gr1 the gr4 and um death free only um so that's really it um hope you found this video helpful it's a little bit different um just kind of talking through some of the stuff here so you know there's a lot of tornado videos on my channel which is again one of my favorite aircraft so i love talking about it and love um building them so that's pretty much it so i hope you enjoyed the video and um plenty more coming up um i got I can't, I can't go through spells um typically one or two videos a month but with everybody kind of off work and home right now i've got plenty of spare time so i've been churning out tons of videos um going from my stash and uh, doing some reviews and stuff and some updates if you guys see anything in my stash you want me to review which i've not reviewed already just give me a holler um i do have all kinds of stuff if you go back to my video from around about december i did go through my stash um i should probably have updates a lot's changed since then um a lot of armor's gone um and i bought I really got into 72nd aircraft this this year 2020 um i was pretty much at 48th and 32nd scale and really dropped it down and, and just loving it right now the, the building the smaller one like allows me to do a little bit of diorama and bases that kind of stuff um so check out my other videos um and that's pretty much it so i hope you guys staying safe um happy modeling and i'll see you next time ta -ra. bye